All right, before I get too far into the series, I want to bring up some exciting new Z-Modeler updates real quick. So let's go into our palette here, and we'll just grab a plain 3D. We'll drag it down on our canvas, go into edit mode, make a poly mesh 3D, turn on poly frame so you can see it, and actually let's go over here to Skin Shader 4 out of our materials so we can see a little bit better. I'm going to go in here to Geometry, and I'm just going to hit this Reconstruct until we get down to just a few polygons here, and then I'm going to say Delete Higher. Now the reason I'm going to say delete higher is uh, when I go into the Z Modeler brush, which is BZM, I'm going to be limited to what I can do with subdivision history. Now in 2021, I can go through here even with subdivision history and do things that aren't going to change the vert order. Like I can go in here and say, you know, hover over an edge. Well, here's some Z Modeler basics. You hover over a face with your Z Modeler brush and that'll give you face options. You hold down the space bar and you can see you have polygon actions, you have a target um, and a couple more modifiers which will give you even more control. Uh, same thing for edges, just hover over an edge, hold down space bar, now you've got edge actions, and then you can go through here and do all sorts of cool stuff. Same thing with point, hover over a point, that'll give you point actions, uh, targets, and then modifiers there. Now for people who are used to, or coming from another program where it's like, well, I have a hotkey for bevel and I have a hotkey for extrude, you can do the exact same thing. Uh, this is basically, once you get the muscle memory to like where the normal things you use are, like you, Usually when you're Z-modeling, your hard surface modeling, you use four or five things and that's about it. So you actually get pretty quick at it. If you want though, you can assign a hotkey not only to say, you know, whenever I'm on a face, I always want to do an extrude or a Q-mesh. If you want to know more about Q-mesh and all the cool things you can do with that, uh, again, in my YouTube channel and my playlist, this new intro to ZBrush, ZBrush Radiation. This will take you through a bunch of Z Modeler basics. That's the basics of everything, but Z Modeler is also in here. You can see it starts with video number 32. Same thing on my Art Station page. Just click on here, click on this upper right hand corner, and you can kind of go through the videos that way as well. But getting back to assigning hotkeys for things, if you want to, you can assign a hotkey. I have a hotkey assigned to my Z Modeler brush. So, uh, you know, I can go to my standard brush, I can go to my Z Modeler brush, and go to my clay brush, inflate brush. Go to my custom menu. I have a hotkey assigned to a custom menu, so it's like a marking menu in here. And again, if you want to know more about the basics of custom interfaces, custom menus, hotkeys, that ZBrush Radiation playlist will take you through all that. But back to Z Modeler, so I can go Alt Q, and that's my Z Modeler. And I can set up a Z Modeler to be like, okay, every time I'm over a face, I want a Q Mesh Polygroup All. Every time I'm over an edge, I want to bevel a complete edge loop. Every time I'm over a point, I want to split. So that way you can have an entire hotkey, you can have one hotkey for this brush that's a, that has three different actions depending on what component you're hovering over. If you want to make more of these, just go up here to Z Modeler, your Z Modeler brush, hit clone, and now you can hover over face and say, okay, with this hotkey, every time I hover over face, I want to do an inset. And when I'm insetting, every time I hover over an edge, I usually want to do a collapse. And then every time I hover over a point, I want to stitch two points. Now, in order to have a hockey assigned to these, so every time you start up ZBrush, you have access to them, what you need to do, so if I hit the B menu, you're gonna see, I have two Z modeler brushes. This is my original one, uh, this is my new one. Actually, what I might consider doing is leaving this original one alone. It's, in a, it's, it's gonna be in a different spot than these new ones you're doing. So what I would maybe do is say, you know, I go back in here, go ahead and clone off another one, and then set this one up with, again, Q mesh, bevel, split. So now I have two new Z modeler brushes. I can, I can assign a hotkey to either one of these and I can have an entirely different face, edge, and point action for both of them. This one on here, the original Z modeler, Z modeler brush, I'm gonna leave alone. But for these two, I can select one of them. I can go in here to brush, save as, and in fact, we can navigate right here. Program files, pixel logic, whatever version you're using, Z startup, brush presets. Anything you put in here will load up with ZBrush on startup. So if I go in here and I hit B, you're going to see I have this move Accu brush and I can go over here. If I have to hover over it, if you look in the upper left hand corner, it says Alt V. So you can assign a hotkey to that. So if I wanted to assign a hotkey to this brush, once I save it in the brush presets, it'll load these up and you can name it whatever you want. So you basically go up here to brush, save as, save it in here. And then once you restart ZBrush, go back in here hover over it, hold down Control alt tap it, give it a hotkey, like Alt-P. It's gonna say in the upper left-hand corner, custom hotkey assigned successfully. And now when I go through my brushes, and I'll go back to my standard brush, go back to my clay brush, and then I do Alt-P. Uh, that'll bring up that new Z modeler brush I have, and I'll always have access to it. It'll be there on startup. And again, you can assign hotkeys 
to any Z-modeler actions. Or like I said before, you can just go through here and just remember where these things are. You know, the few things that you end up using day to day, uh, you can go pretty fast as well. Now back to what I was saying originally, before ZBrush 2021, if you wanted to use the Z-modeler brush, it wouldn't allow you to use it on something with a subdivision history. But what you can do now is, as long as you're not changing the vert order, like adding a bevel, if I go in here and say bevel edge loop complete, and I try and bevel, it's gonna say, ah, I can't do that. However, I can go in here and I can say polygroup a poly loop. So I can go ahead and change a polygroup here and I can change a polygroup here. I can go over this edge and I can say transpose this edge and I can click on that. Or I can say, and here's another new feature. Normally what I'd have to do in ZBrush 2020 and before, I'd have to go back into draw mode, hover over an edge, and then say transpose as loop complete and click this one. However, what I can do now is just, when that's showing, I can just tap off. That'll put me back into an edge action and then I can grab this edge. Tap off, grab this edge. Tap off, grab this edge. So you can move a lot faster now when you're using some of these actions. If you don't like that, it's underneath here under preferences. Gizmo 3D. There's a new tap to exit gizmo mode. Go ahead and turn that off. Go back up here to preferences, store config, and that should stay off for you. Another thing you can do with the Z modeler brush that you could do before, um, we'll go hit Q to go back into draw mode. You can hold down Alt and then you can start painting uh, new polygroups on here. And if you tap Alt, you'll get new polygroups. And again, this is all in the basics of Z modeler in those videos, uh, that video series I showed you earlier, the ZBrush for ideation series. However, what you can do in 2021 is you can start painting. And then it's you're like, oh, you know what? I didn't mean to paint that one. If you alt tap it again or alt drag over it, it'll go ahead and unpaint that. So these are just quick selections that you can basically do. Let's just go through here and paint selections and then hold down alt, unpaint selections. And then these white polygroups are gonna be treated as a single polygroup. So if you go in here and we say mask a single poly, it's gonna mask all of those white ones because it treats alt painted as a single polygroup. I can also hit Control-W, go ahead and make this all one polygroup. 